What's going on, wide world, and welcome back to the Expression of Love podcast. Most importantly, welcome back to Become Your Own Breakthrough. Today, we are going to be talking, as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, a little bit about misinformation. Now, I have a huge problem with the attack on free speech. I have a huge problem with the boogeymanning, if you will, the creation of boogeymen um, by the left-wing media, as well as government officials and politicians um, to in an effort that, that are being created in an effort to make the public afraid of ideas being shared and arguments being made, um, perspectives that are not their own being spread, just closed-mindedness being the norm or being normalized. I have a huge problem with closed-mindedness being normalized because when closed mindedness is normalized, people are killed and they're not just killed one by one. No, people are killed sometimes in the tens or hundreds of millions because closed mindedness leads to a closed minded um, country leads to things like Maoist China, Lenin and Stalin's uh, USSR. It leads to destruction of human beings and it's never good. So I have a huge problem with what's going on right now in regard to not only the attack on the uh, free speech on social media platforms, but also the fact that we have so many examples of people going out and interviewing people on the street and what the people on the street sometimes are saying is things like they're okay with violence being done to, to people that disagree with the mainstream media's narrative, the left-wing mainstream media's narrative. Do you disavow Antifa? No, God no. What about the violence they do? They're so bad. Uh, I think that violence is a useful political tool. So if someone was in there and they got, and Antifa was in there and they got violent with Michael Knowles, would you disavow that? Yeah. He's, he's not a, a fascist. He's not like a hateful person. He's just maybe a little- He's out there talking. He, he's not, he's saying, probably saying some hateful shit. I don't know what he's saying. I don't know much about the man to be honest. So why protest him? What little I do know was pretty hateful. What have you watched of his that you're like, oh, this video is bad. He said this, this, and this. Like, tell me something you've watched and the evidence I, you have. So then how can you be out here? I saw the poster. That was enough for me. I saw the poster? Yeah. That was enough? That was enough. That's wild, man. You shouldn't say that on camera. I'll say it on camera. I'm okay with political violence. Do you know what Michael Knowles looks like? No. You ever see a picture of him? No. You ever seen a video? Nothing. So you don't even know who this guy, if he went in that room and he was sitting in the chair, you wouldn't be able to point him out? Well, I'm assuming he's on the stage. So I tell whoever's on the stage to go Wow, that's wild. Well, you're very passionate, so that's good. They're okay with people being locked up for saying things that they disagree with. They're okay with people being killed for things that they don't agree with. Now, some of them don't go as far as to say killed, but they imply it. Um, and you can look up those. I'm not going to share those clips necessarily in this video because I have something a little more concrete and a little more serious to share with you. But... I've seen plenty of it. It's it's not the the videos are not hard to find. One quick easy search on YouTube um would would get you there as well as if you're if you're willing to just go out yourself, bring a microphone, you know, and record for your or just use your phone and record for yourself what people are willing to say especially in inner cities, right? Especially in blue regions of this nation, what people are saying um, should be done uh, uh, to harm and or silence and censor and or all the way to lock up and, and throw in jail people that they disagree with and ideas that they disagree with. Well, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? What do COVID-19 9-11, the 2020 election, the transgender community, and systemic racism in America all have in common. The government and left-wing media have done nothing but lie about them. That's what they have in common. 
They lied about the safety as well as the ability to stop transmission about the jabs. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it's entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. They lied about the fact that they changed the rules about counting votes for the 2020 election. They lied about the nefarious agenda of the trans community to target children for profit and sexual entertainment. And they lied about the amount of systemic racism that exists amongst law enforcement and other institutions against Blacks in America. Now, I could go into detail about what specific lies were told about each of these concepts and events, but for what we are here to talk about, it doesn't matter. If you believe that the government and left-wing media are completely guiltless of lying about these things, then just click off this video. You're a part of the problem and you're wasting your time. But something else has happened, something much worse than mere lies from the government and left-wing media. What else has happened, you ask? They accused anyone who pointed out the lies or theorized in contradiction to the lies or even merely introduced skepticism toward the lies, a quote, conspiracy theorist. They created a label, a boogeyman, if you will, for all to fear, and then started moving to silence that boogeyman and produce tyrannical legislation to keep him or her quiet permanently. But wait, it gets worse. Aside from the label of conspiracy buff, they also introduced a few other terms that have been quietly normalized before we even knew what was happening. Here's a quote from the popular article produced by The Intercept featuring the new terms and their definitions. Quote, Department of Homeland Security announced a new disinformation governance board, a panel designed to police misinformation, which is false information spread unintentionally, disinformation, which is false information spread intentionally, and malinformation, which is factual information shared typically out of context with harmful intent that allegedly threatens the United States' interests. While this board was widely ridiculed, immediately scaled back, and then shut down within a few months, other initiatives are underway as DHS pivots to monitoring social media now that its original mandate, the War on Terror, has been wound down. Department of Homeland Security is targeting not only false information shared unintentionally or false information spread intentionally, but this thing called malinformation, which they deem factual information shared typically out of context with harmful intent. So if given the chance, the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, would possibly punish people in an unspec unspecified way for spreading factual information. You cannot tell me that this is not tyranny. And now this article by The Intercept continues to show just how deep this goes by pointing out a few things. One, though the Department of Homeland Security shuttered its controversial disinformation governance board, a strategic document reveals the underlying work is ongoing. Two, the Department of Homeland Security plans to target inaccurate information on the origins of, COVID of the COVID-19 pandemic and the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines, racial justice, the United States withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the nature of the United States support to Ukraine all of which seem to have nefarious agendas attached to them or behind them entirely. And three, 
Facebook created a special portal for the, par for the Department of Homeland Security and government partners to report disinformation directly. Let me say that again. Facebook created a special portal for the DHS and government partners to report disinformation directly. Directly to who? And for what purpose are they reporting, quote, disinformation? Also, how do you distinguish between misinformation, inaccurate information shared unintentionally, and disinformation, inaccurate information shared intentionally? How do you know? Who knows what? And that's even before you get to the question, when is the government and left-wing media going to come forth and admit that they were engaging in disinformation as well as misinformation? Because they certainly lied about the vaccines. <laughs> They certainly lied about systemic racism amongst police in America. They certainly lied about changing the rules of the 2020 election uh, vote counts. And they certainly lied about the transgender activities involving children. Anyway, getting back to the article, if you read this article, you will likely get chills down your spine when you read this text message sent from a Microsoft executive and former DHS official to a current DHS director. This is a te text message, quote, platforms have to get comfortable with government. It's really interesting how hesitant they remain. This was said by Microsoft executive Matt Ma Matt Masterson, a former DHS official, texted to Jen Easterly, a DHS director, back in February of this year. Platform, quote, platforms have to get comfortable with government. It's interesting how hesitant they remain. Again, a Microsoft exec who used to be a DHS official, right, a government official, texting a current DHS director, that platforms have to get comfortable with government. I'm less concerned with his opinion than I am with his occupation's potential power if said comfortability levels were to be normalized between platforms and government, knowing the fact that regular citizens that are posting things could be arbitrarily targeted for sharing things deemed by the government or the platform to be malinformation, misinformation, or disinformation. To put it simply, there is nothing more dangerous to a powerful entity than a loss of power, especially if that power was gained via deceit, force, manipulation, and corruption. And when people know the truth and the government says the lie, 
that could lead to the public believing that the government should not be as powerful as it is, meaning that could lead to the government losing power, meaning that could lead to liars being held accountable for their actions. And it's not like all of this stuff is just completely unimportant. It gets deeper. The article by Intercept goes on to reveal that all major social media networks, not just Meta and Twitter, but also Reddit, LinkedIn, and all the rest, met on a monthly basis with the DHS to discuss disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. And do you want to know really just how deep this thing goes? Well, one of the stories that was deemed worthy of censorship, system, systemic censorship, had the potential to change the result of the 2020 election. Allegedly, the Hunter Biden laptop story could have single-handedly kept Biden from being elected president, locking down the country, ruining our economy, promoting gender transitioning children, and destroying our international relations. I mean, check it out for yourself. Here's something by the New York Post. Cover-up of Hunter Biden's laptop had major role in his 2020 loss. Donald Trump weighed in on the cover-up Hunter Biden's laptop sharing a new poll that found most Americans following the scandal believe he would have won re-election had there been truthful coverage of the device. The poll found that 79% of the people surveyed, who again were following the scandal, not everybody was following the scandal, but 79% of the people following the scandal thought that if the press and the government had verified that Hunter had leveraged his father's influence for overseas business dealings, as first reported by the Post, Trump likely would have regained the White House. The findings came as Senator Ron Johnson publicized as a whistleblower's accusation that the FBI ordered against to, excuse me, ordered agents to slow walk the investigation into the laptop so as to not influence another presidential election, a reference to the 2016 October surprise probe into the Hillary Clinton's into Hillary Clinton's emails. Spies who lie, the intelligence experts who falsely discredited Hunter Biden's laptop and still won't say sorry. And this is what's interesting about it. Sorry for that picture. The Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Republican is also asking to grill the feds who he said tried to discredit his investigation into Hunter's international business as Russian disinformation. Hmm. And then in this similar story here. If something is reported to us as potentially um, misinformation, important misinformation, we, we also have this third party fact checking program because we don't want to be deciding what's true and false. And for the, I think it was, five or seven days when it was basically being um being determined whether it was false um the distribution on facebook was decreased but people were still allowed to share it so you could still share it you could still consume it so when um, you say the distribution is decreased it, it got shared how does that work it basically the ranking in newsfeed was a little bit less So the ranking in the news feed was, quote, a little bit less. We know what that means. That means that you clicked share and it was like you didn't click anything. Right now and at the time of this story coming out around the 2020 election, we had already moved far past people visiting your page, you know, actual friends of yours that you knew outside of the Internet, going to your page to check up on you. Usually, they just wait to see what you share that shows up on their news feed. And everybody, especially ex top executives at these social media companies, already know this fact. People are not going to people's individual pages. This notion that, oh, well, you are still, you know, you could still share it. All that means is we didn't delete your page if you shared it. Right? That doesn't mean that it wasn't completely censored from anybody being able to see it just like a lot of the vaccine sharings and things. but um, And this, this pretty much breaks down the, the same thing, that nearly four of five Americans who've been following the Hunter Biden scandal believe that the truthful coverage of it could have changed the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. I remember, I remember being told by the current administration and the 
leftist pundits that the jab was 98 to 100 percent reliable. I remember being told that people who questioned the election results were crazy conspiracy theorists. I remember being told that the trans stuff would never enter our schools or be pushed onto our children. I remember being told repeatedly that black people were systemically targeted and killed by racist white police every single day. I remember hearing about Operation Mockingbird, the CIA, CIA operation that was effective in controlling the messaging coming out of the New York Times, Newsweek, CBS News, and other news outlets. I remember MK Ultra. I remember the Tuskegee experiments. Not that I was alive for many of these things. I remember reading about them. <laughs> I digress. And then there's things that are completely unique and very telling and a little bit chilling. Things like Operation Northwoods. So the subject of this Operation Northwoods, as you can see here, is justification for US military intervention in Cuba. This was in March, 1962, okay? And we're gonna skip some of the preliminary things in this document, but I want you to know a couple of things about it. Facts bearing on the problem. It is recognized that any action which becomes pretext for US military intervention in Cuba will lead to a political decision, which then would lead to a military action. And what some of those actions look like in overview, I'm not gonna go through all of them, are start rumors, many, use clandestine radio, land friendly Cubans in uniform over the fence, quote unquote, to stage an attack on a base, capture Cuban, again friendly, saboteurs inside the base, start riots near the main base, excuse me, start riots near the base's main gate, meaning friendly Cuban. You know what friendly means in the military, right? It means on our side. So friendly Cubans start riots near the main gate. Blow up ammunition inside the base, start fires. Burn aircraft on the base, sabotage. Lob martyr shells from outside the base into the base, some damage to installations. Capture assault teams approaching from the sea or vicinity of Guantanamo City. Capture militia group which storms the base. Sabotage the ship, sabotage ship in harbor, large fires. Sink ship near harbor entrance. Conduct funerals for mock victims. Mock victims. What's important here? What is this all basically saying to the American public? Well, what it says to me, and I'm in the American public, <laughs> is that you cannot put it past the government to use its own people, as well as rumors disseminated through television and radio, as well as mock victims to push forward political and or military agendas that deliberately fool the American public. You cannot put it past not only the government, but also the left-wing media who obviously through the Department of Homeland Security's leaked texts and documents are in bed with, and I'm not even gonna say just left-wing media, Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll say social media and left-wing media. See what I did there? are in bed with the government and, well, in short, what it means is that your freedom is at risk. And the biggest and most influential freedom that you are afforded in the United States of America is the freedom of speech. 
your freedom of speech is more important than your freedom of mobility, your freedom of enterprise, even, I would argue, your freedom of religion, although I'm not saying that as a fact, I'm saying that as my opinion. Your freedom of speech is the most important freedom. Why? Because without your freedom of speech, how do you advocate for exercising the rest of the freedoms that you're afforded in this country. If you don't have your freedom of speech protected, and if you don't do your part in protecting your freedom of speech, you are putting yourself and you are putting all of your neighbors and loved ones at risk of falling to a tyranny that you could never imagine. All the tyrannies of the past did not have the level of technological ability that we have today. We even have AI now, or very close to AI, very close to a true AI now. And you, you really don't want to automate your tyrannical entities. Okay, humanity, message to humanity, side note, message to humanity, you really should rethink <laughs> uh, what you're doing if you're contributing to even the potential automation of tyranny and, and, uh, at any level. But I digress. Your freedom of speech is, param is, is the most important freedom that you have in this country. And so when it comes to exposing things like this, the list of things that I just exposed in this video, the things that they are exposing in, in the uh, right wing media outlets, the things that are, are getting exposed should be important to you because a lot of them are specifically targeted towards your freedom of speech, my freedom of speech, our collective freedom of speech, which again is adjacent to your freedom of religion and your freedom of enterprise and mobility and all of that. And the only way that they win, and they know this, is if they win by your surrender. Meaning if they get over a certain percentage of the United States population to willingly submit to their, to, to their tyrannical call, then that's how they would win. If you remain on your square, if you remain 10 toes down on the ground, if you remain fearlessly in the truth, and you keep telling the truth, and you make sure that the next generation knows the truth, not only the truth of the freedoms that are being threatened now, but also the truth of the trans agenda, the truth of the racism of the Democratic Party that, that, that promotes itself as the most tolerant party, the truth of the reason why the government does not want you to have your good, why some in the government, excuse me, do not want you to have your right to bear arms. Telling the truth is one of the most important missions that you can be on right now and that you are on right now, especially if you're watching this YouTube channel. So what I have to say ultimately boils down to this. Without your surrender, they don't win, but you cannot do it alone. You must start to live your life not only based on your individuality, but based on the concept of community, based on the concept of unity, and based on the concept of one nation under God. Because the government is very close to playing the game of now I'm God. And it seems that the left wing wants, really, really wants to do away with uh, the traditional godly way of living or the traditional teachings of God. So, so you, when I say without your surrender, is not just you. It's you, but it's also your friends. It's also your family. It's also your children. It's also the, the youth that you can reach through your own community and your, your own job and whatever you do. Right? That's what you means. They win via your surrender. So even if you don't personally surrender, but you allow everyone around you to surrender and all your loved ones to surrender without fighting like hell 
to make sure that they eventually get exposed to the, tr to the truth, then they will win. And so that's why I'm out here doing what I do. That's why we have a lot of soldiers out here doing what they do. And luckily, one piece, you know, one great piece of evidence that things are not always going to go their way, the way of the left, is this red wave where people are going out and voting red for the first time in their life and saying, we don't want all of this tyranny anymore. We don't want to keep confusing our children and for you to just be okay with it. We don't want to be lied to about medicine anymore. We don't want that. And there's hope in that. There's hope in what people are doing now. So it's not all bad. And it is time for you to take your life back and become your own breakthrough. Hashtag tell the truth is the movement. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you have not already had the chance. Comment below if you want to add a link or argue against anything that I said or support anything that I said. I really appreciate you for rocking out with me for this long. Thank you so much. Once again, it's Soul Expression of the Expression of Love podcast, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Expressions of